Earlier today, Donald Trump tweeted that the vice president does have the power to throw out fraudulent votes. Many news outlets say that's not true. Mike Pence's role is ceremonial. This is the final moment, the finale, the last stand for Donald Trump. Constitutionally, at least, there are already many leftists saying that, of course, Donald Trump will never let this go. And he's going to extend this well beyond the sixth. We'll see. But as far as the Constitution is concerned, tomorrow is the day they officially announce the winner who will be the president. Now, of course, the media said over and over again, it's going to be Joe Biden. But if you actually look at the fine details, Mike Pence is the one who will announce who is going to be the president. And there's a couple interesting things going on. Notably, Kelly Loeffler is going to be supporting Donald Trump by objecting to the vote count. About 140 Republicans in the House will be doing the same. But many Republicans are coming out saying they will not object. Even if Donald Trump was able to get a decent amount of support in the House and the Senate, there are still Republicans who will vote with Democrats to stop him. But what if Mike Pence really does have the power to hold up the two different slates, the two different envelopes, and choose which one to count? Some have argued that's the case. The media has argued that's not the case. I'll put it this way. Officially and constitutionally, it seems to be that Mike Pence is just ceremonial. But that doesn't really matter. Even the Associated Press acknowledges that Mike Pence has been having meetings with Trump to discuss strategy, and he might actually just say whatever he wants. I mean, think about it. Let's say everybody says the vote count is for Biden. And Mike Pence says, as the president of the Senate, the tiebreaker, the vice president of the United States, Trump wins. What will they do? How would they respond to that? Would they have to go sue if he just says those words? I'd like to remind people that we can talk about legal policy and constitutional procedure. But as the the media has screamed for the past four years, you can't claim Trump is violating the Constitution and then argue that he won't. Either he is or he isn't, right? Well, if you are on the left and you're in the media and you are saying over and over again that Trump is acting in violation of the Constitution and and doesn't care for it, well, then why would you be surprised if Mike Pence came out and said Trump wins. Now, they argue that Pence can't do that. I don't think that's true because I can show you what the AP says, and they seem to at least imply Mike Pence could just announce it for Trump, and then we don't know where we go from there. Constitutional crisis, I suppose. There's also the 1960 election in Hawaii where Richard Nixon, when he was presiding over the electoral vote count, chose which certified slate to, to, to count. Ultimately, it wouldn't have changed things. But the important point is that it's recognized, at least on Wikipedia for what it's worth, that he chose which to count. The big difference here is that Trump's slate of electors, the people who are supporting him, cast procedural votes, not certified by anyone. But Majid Nawaz, a very smart dude, thinks Trump is playing a strategy. And Majid's been right about a lot of things. I'm not entirely convinced he's right here, though. I'll say it again. I I I am very comfortable saying Joe Biden's going to win. He's going to be inaugurated as the next president even though it's shocking and it leaves me in disbelief that this man actually was able to pull it off. But I just can't see Trump winning against the establishment. That's the issue. There's one factor that may change things, and that's if people show up today and tomorrow for the president. If there is critical mass, Trump might make some moves. But I suppose that at least remains to be seen. Let's take a look at what they're saying about Trump calling on Pence and what Majid Nuaz, very smart dude, I'll say it again, He's laid out what he thinks Trump's plan is. And this is not some random Internet conspiracy theory guy. This is someone who's giving you legal arguments as to what he think may happen as to how Trump might actually win. I think it's silly to say Trump might actually win, to be completely honest. But there's a light that was a lottery tickets chance. We'll see. Before we get started, make sure you head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you would like to support my work. There are many ways you can give. I got a P.O. box. You want to send me some stuff. But the best thing you can do is share this video, my friends. The finale is upon us. Maybe it'll be a two-parter, a three-parter, a four-parter. Who knows how long this episode will go. But this is the season finale. If Trump pulls it off, then we get a new season, a new four new seasons of The Trump Show. And if he doesn't, that's it. So if you'd like to support the channel, sharing is the best way you can. But don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And let's read from the Hill. They say Trump raises pressure on Pence 
incorrectly stating he could throw out electors. They say Trump in a Tuesday tweet suggested he believes that Pence should overturn the results in some states by rejecting chosen electors, a power the vice president doesn't have in what is largely a ceremonial role. In the tweet, Trump claimed incorrectly that Pence, quote, has the power to reject fraudulently chosen electors. The Constitution does not grant the vice president such powers. That sentence is really interesting to me. This idea of who is granted what by whom. I believe that uh, the Constitution says that our rights are granted to us by our creator. Or is that the Declaration? Sorry if I'm mixing them up. But our rights don't come from the government. And our abilities, the words we say, aren't given to us by parchment. What the Constitution does is restrict. Does the Constitution explicitly say the vice president may not? It doesn't. It doesn't say that in his role he can do certain things. But we're human beings. What would happen? I mentioned this earlier, but again, I ask you. What would happen if Pence just said Trump wins? Oh, they'd all start screaming and yelling, rabble, rabble, rabble. And then what? I don't know. Constitutional crisis. They go on to say Congress could reject the results of a state's electoral college uh, vote, but it would require majorities in both chambers. There are not enough votes to overturn the results in either chamber, given opposition from Democrats and many Republicans. A federal judge in Texas last week dismissed a far-fetched effort by Louis Gohmert, a Republican, that aimed to give Pence the legal authority to effectively overturn the election results. Pence, represented by a Justice Department attorney, had asked that the judge dismiss the suit, saying the vice president's office was not the proper defendant. And I think that's actually correct. I don't know why they sued Pence. Seems like Gohmert should have sued Congress, arguing that the law that was passed, it was an 1887 electors, uh, the, uh, electoral law, was unconstitutional. Not Mike Pence. I don't seem to understand that play. But that's what the judge said. You should have sued Congress. Now, they're saying that Pence can't do anything. I want to show you something first. This is from Wikipedia, the 1960 United States presidential election. Now, I will be the first to acknowledge that Wikipedia, for the most part, has become an opinion aggregator in all modern news. You're not going to get anything accurate as it pertains to recent developments in politics, because most articles since the advent of the blog have been regurgitated opinion, calling someone far right. Doesn't even mean anything, yet they'll put it in there because enough people at various blogs claimed it. Okay, not a big fan of Wikipedia. And I used to be, it's kind of sad. But let me, let me read you this paragraph and, and tell you why I think Pence actually could have an impact. They say, initially it appeared Republican candidate Richard Nixon had won in the state, as he was 141 votes ahead after the first count. A court-ordered recount was still underway when Hawaii's Republican governor signed a certificate from the GOP electors, giving the state's three electoral votes to Nixon on the same day. The Democratic electors also issued a certificate awarding the votes to Kennedy. The final recount showed Kennedy had actually prevailed by 115 votes, forcing the governor to sign the second certificate from the Democratic electors. Although there is no evidence the governor actually signed the second certificate. Keep that in mind. Both certificates had arrived in Washington by the time Congress convened in January 1961. And then Vice President Nixon charged with presiding over a joint session to certify his own loss, hearing no objections. Nixon ordered the Democratic certificate counted and ignored the accompanying Republican certificate, even though it also bore the governor's signature as required by federal law. I'm not going to pretend that Wikipedia is the herald of truth and the bastion of great aggregation. But they do say, for what it's worth, based on the, the aggregate history writing of the various users, that there was no evidence. They say there, was, uh, there, was, there is no evidence the governor actually signed the Democrat certificate. What does that mean? Richard Nixon received two certificates. One, we don't know. There's no evidence to say it was signed and one that was. The initial slate was for the Republicans. Richard Nixon chose the Democratic certificate. They say Nixon ordered the Democratic certificate counted and ignored the Republican certificate. Why? Why would he do that? How does he have the power to do that? How could Richard Nixon look at two certificates, one that there's no evidence it was certified, so they say, maybe this is wrong, and one that was, and say the one that was certif certified in the trash, and the second slate that came well after, we're going to count that one. Because it would seem that as the president of the Senate, the vice president does have that power. 
What I find interesting is that although there are many outlets claiming Pence can't do anything, you have stories like this from the AP. Loyal soldier Pence torn between Trump and the Constitution. What does that mean? If he doesn't have the power, he can't do it. So why are they writing these articles claiming that he possibly could? And what happens? If slates arrive in front of Mike Pence and just like Nixon, he ignores the official certified slate certificate and then chooses the one that, well, there's no evidence to say that it was ever certified. What's to stop him from just counting those votes? Honestly, I have no idea. Too many people, I think, on the left view our rights as granted to us by this invisible system that we can't control, that human beings aren't individuals with, with the, the ability to, to live and do what they want. When you think about it, we have laws. We say you can't kill someone. People do it. And then what do you do? Arrest them and punish them later. Exactly. Exactly. When someone commits a crime, they violated our system. But you don't have a right to do that, they say. You're right. And so after the fact, we'll figure it out. That's that's what I'm looking at right here. When a police officer bestowed with certain authorities illegally arrests someone, the left screams, you don't have the right to do that. And guess what? They complain that often nothing happens to these officers. What would happen if Mike Pence did something that he doesn't have the explicit authority to do? And then nothing happens afterwards. I think it's silly to believe that humans are this big robotic machine that doesn't change or act uh, or, or doesn't engage in anomalous behavior. It's entirely possible Mike Pence doesn't show up. One story that was going viral earlier this morning was that Chuck Grassley, as the president, uh, pro, president pro tempe of the Senate, was going to preside. But then statements came out after the fact saying, no, no, that's confusion. That's a miscommunication. Pence will be there. He will be there. But what if he didn't? But the Constitution says he presides over it. Yeah. And he could just not show up. Do people not realize these things? What are they going to do? Put him in handcuffs and drag him in to preside over this? What if he doesn't go? What if no one does? What if none of the people can can even get in the building because too many Trump supporters have flooded the streets of D.C.? No idea. Really, does anybody know? Uh, They want to pretend like they do, but I don't think they can. In this story, from the AP, they go on to mention that Mike Pence, uh, you know, has been meeting with Trump and there have been strategies. They say on Monday, Pence was in the Oval Office with Trump and senior aides as the president continued to seek pathways to overturn the election results. The scene appeared animated as the president, Pence, and their chiefs of staff met with lawyer John Eastman and others. Former New York Mayor Giuliani, who had been leading the president's legal effort, said in a podcast interview that the team had been consulting with constitutional law professors and analyzing Pence's options. He said Trump and Pence on Monday were going through all of the research and would probably wait until Tuesday to make a decision on how to proceed. I want to stress this story is from right now. What will they do tomorrow? Mike Pence meeting with Trump and lawyers, and then Trump tweets, Pence can do this. I think it's an issue of confidence and political willpower. I've already told you I'm not entirely convinced that you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I've already told you I'm overwhelmingly convinced that Biden is going to win just because of, uh, you know, here's the way I put it. And I know a lot of Trump supporters don't like to hear this kind of stuff, but uh, so be it. Mike Pence will do what he must to protect himself, his family and his assets. And Trump has lost legitimacy in many ways, notably with court fail- defeat. Many of Trump's lawsuits have failed for a variety of reasons, but mostly procedural doesn't matter. And also lawyers like Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood saying things that are shocking and outrageous. I don't know why the Trump support so many. I don't want to say all Trump supporters, because I think most are reasonable, but I'm shocked that so many are willing to line up behind Lynn Wood, who is tweeting things that at the very least are shocking and confusing to regular people talking about conspiracies and Pence going to prison. He tweeted Pence was going to go to jail. Now Pence is in a meeting with Trump to try and help Trump win. You see, you have to ask yourself, why wasn't Lynn Wood banned from Twitter? When he started tweeting all this crazy stuff and saying crazy things, they just let him do it because it hurts Trump, takes away Trump's legitimacy. If Trump comes out and says Wisconsin right now has these uh, has this bill put forward that says the election was illegal. Therefore, we challenge and require Wisconsin to, to have their legislature certify a slate. That's legitimate. 
And you talk to a lot of people and say, look, the, the, the Wisconsin legislature has, has put forth a resolution declaring the illegality of this election. That's normal. And you'll say, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, let me show you. I can actually show it to you. But when you talk about these weird conspiracies and Pence getting locked up, you lose legitimacy. But let's talk about this. Majid Nawaz says, here's Trump. He, he, he lays out Trump's plan. And this is from the other day. He says, U.S. election, next steps, January 6th. Now, I, I want to mention, Majid is a, a radio host in London. He is one of the high, you know, high profile individuals involved in what they call the intellectual dark web. He's a verified Twitter user. He has 276,000 followers, particularly prominent individual. I'm not going to pretend like his word is law. He's the smartest guy in the world. But this is not some random Twitter thread from a conspiracy theorist. This is a smart fella. That's why I think it's worth listening to his opinion, because he's been right about many things in the past. And well, let's see what he says. One, Trump address. Two, Congress convenes and A-12 objection invoked. Three, Vice President Pence asserts arbitration powers as president of the Senate. Four, Thursday the 7th, Wisconsin legislature aims to decertify electoral college votes. Other states may follow. And he links to this resolution put forth by the Wisconsin state legislature that lists all of the violations of state law that happened during the election. They note one of the most, uh, I believe one of the most prominent complaints was over what they call democracy in the park, where they say the clerk of the city of Madison ignored Wisconsin statute 6.855 and created an event named democracy in the park of, and of her own accord de- designated alternate sites where absentee ballots could be collected. They go on to say, members of the Wisconsin State Assembly placed the redress of these and other election law violations and failed administrative procedures as its highest priority and shall take up the legislation crafted to ensure civil officers follow the laws as written. So what does that mean? Well, the count is tomorrow. If this drags out into the seventh, they're already going to have counted, right? Maybe it goes to the Supreme Court and maybe Trump doesn't just stop tomorrow. But either way, Wisconsin has made the move. I'm not entirely convinced it's going to go uh, much further than this, but we'll see. At any rate, we have Imagine Nawaz going on to say, uh, he, he, he references that quote, says they'll you know, follow the, issue, uh, the letter, letter of the law. He goes on to then uh, tweet some other uh, uh, quotes. from. He, he quote tweets himself where he says, it's begun. I fear for the 10 days after January 6th. And this is a tweet from Josh Hawley, who said, Tonight, while I was in Missouri, Antifa scumbags came to our place in D.C. and threatened my wife and newborn daughter, who can't travel. They screamed threats, vandalized, and tried to pound open our door. Let me be clear, my family and I will not be intimidated by left-wing violence. And they're targeting him because Hawley has announced he's going to object. And Majid says, it's begun. I think he's right. Right now, there are people in D.C. We are currently running some tech tests to see if we can make it down there. And I'll tell you this. If you're going to get me off the fence to go walk down to D.C., some must be going on. Okay, I'm not really off the political fence, but I'm planning on being there. And I think we might go there soon. We'll see. Maybe just tomorrow night we'll figure it out. Majid says, President real Donald Trump confirms that he plans to do precisely as I have reported. I'm either the guy who has lost his mind or I've been right all along. When will, quote, liberals apologize for insulting and abusing me on here? Do you think I never forget? And he links to Trump's tweet where he says the vice president has the power to reject fraudulently chosen electors. Let me remind you, I just read the AP that mentioned Trump and Pence had a meeting with law professors. Then Trump tweets this out. Is it possible that in this meeting, the professor says, here's what you can do? And they cite 1960, where Richard Nixon was given two certificates and chose the one that we have no evidence was ever actually certified. Amazing. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll tell you, the left wants me to bend the knee and just say it's over. It's been over and it will always be over. Well, I think there's still a lightning strikes chance, a lottery tickets chance. Trump can pull this off and win. That's why I mentioned the 1960 uh, certification. Now, Wikipedia could be wrong. Again, again, you know, forgive me if that's the case. I'm just, you know, pointing that out. But I think the better issue is politi- to discuss is political willpower. Trump having these meetings, Trump having these discussions, and whether or not they just decide to do something. That's it. You can argue the Constitution doesn't allow it. What are they going to do? Drag Pence out of, the, out, of the, out of the chamber? No, you can't say these things. I certified I'm the vice president. Bang the gavel. Then what? 
Trump supporters say it's done. The president, the vice president has said it so. And the Democrats say he doesn't have the power to do that. Who decides? Supreme Court, maybe. And then what happens when the Supreme Court says, we refuse to take up this case? Then it'll get really weird. I'll tell you that. Magic goes on to say, can you believe I'm still getting replies by petulant plonkers who are clearly resistant to reading and oblivious to the precise meaning of words claiming that I'll be proven wrong? How can descriptive commentary that has been realized to date be wrong ex post facto? I've not done anything but explain the constitutional procedures Team Trump will take ahead of time and have been proven right without openly taking sides in the merits of the fraud claims. These people merely use straw manning as a means to conceal their emotional petulance. Grow up. I hear you. I hear you, bro. I totally get it. I can sit here and tell you this thing happened with Richard Nixon. I can tell you I'm not a constitution, constitutional law professor or a legal scholar. And I can tell you Trump is doing this and will not back down. And I can tell you there are reasons why Trump won't back down. Notably, that at the state level, many AGs are trying to prosecute Trump. They're trying to find a reason to go after him. They're ramping up a, a, a financial probe against him in New York that targets his organization, which will negatively impact his family. So I ask you, when you threaten, threaten a man's legacy and his family, do you think he'll just surrender? I don't. Trump has called for people to be on the ground in D.C., and they are showing up. I saw a video. Looks like a decent amount of people so far. It's the fifth. The main event is tomorrow. We'll see if Trump supporters have the political willpower to actually arrive to defend the president or if it's true, smoke and mirrors. But I'll tell you, after 62 million votes for Trump the first time, jumping up to 74 million, Trump certainly has done something right and generated massive support he didn't have the first time he ran. You only need a couple hundred thousand people out of the 74 million who voted for him to actually show up. Can Trump act? Could you, do you think Trump could get 10 percent of his supporters to arrive in D.C.? Because that would be 7.4 million people. I don't know. 10, maybe it's a lot. What if only 5% showed up and he ended up with, well, we got 3.7 million people. No, no, that's, that's the wrong number. Is that the right number? 3.7? I think I'm right. Anyway, what would happen then if Trump was able to, to pull that off? What if it was only 2.5%? And then now I'm going to start getting bad at math on the fly, but we're only looking at like a million plus, a million and a half or more, a little bit, almost 2 million. That would be massive. Alex Jones said, I think he said, what, 10 million? Or did he say a million? I think he said, he said a million. I'm not entirely sure. No, maybe he said 10 million. But I think there's going to be a lot of people there. And whether and, and that'll be the defining factor. If millions of people show up, if, if 500,000 showed up, Trump might make some moves knowing he's got people there on the ground to protect him. More importantly, I saw a video coming out of D.C. Because right now people are going down there. We've got a, we got a crew going down there doing some internet tests. And I'm hearing that the National Guard has already blocked roads, that there are National Guard service members on the road. And when you try to walk past them, they say, you've got to have an ID or a letter proving you're coming here or going to a building or a business. Now, why are they doing that? Who, who told them to do that? What would happen if the National Guard said, this road is closed? I brought this up the other day on the IRL podcast and on my show, but I want, I want, to, I want to mention it again just for those who, who missed it. What would happen if a politician, a congressman or so, was walking up and there's National Guard saying, roads closed, you know, we're locking the city down because of the protest, you can't come this way. And they go, oh, but I'm a member of Congress. I, sir, I don't know. We were ordered not to let anybody through. But I, I, I need to go vote, sir, please. You can go around, talk to my supervisor or my commanding officer, ask them what's going on. I don't know. All I know is they said, don't let anyone through. I've been in these situations, not as a member of Congress, obviously. Maybe they'll just be like, all right, sure, fine, go ahead. But I've been in situations where I've seen, you know, uh, there have been roads locked down and the cops will just be like, look, I got no idea why it's locked down. You just can't go here. We're not going to let you do it. What would happen if those orders prevent Congress from getting to the joint session? What if they were orders specifically given to help one person win or to make someone lose? The National Guard service members won't know that. They'll just be told to stop people from crossing the road. And it's already happening. So I wonder, with the new Secretary of Defense, acting Secretary of Defense, who is apparently a Trump loyalist. Why did Trump remove top Pentagon leadership and appoint people who are loyal to him? Well, they say it's because he wanted to get out of Afghanistan. But a lot of people were worried that Trump would try and stage some kind of military coup. He doesn't need to. 
He just needs reasonable orders that give him some kind of benefits on the 6th, maybe blocking some cars from getting through. Maybe it doesn't block members of Congress. Maybe it just creates a traffic jam and there's too many people there and then cars can't get in. Maybe it delays it past the 7th and then Wisconsin does vote to decertify and then everything falls apart. Or in all honesty, in all reality, Trump will come out, he'll make his his stand, there'll be objections, there'll be a debate. And then they certify Joe Biden as the victor. When Richard Nixon counted those ballots, he chose the uh, the certification that was against him. Because sometimes it's better to just bow out and lose the fight, I suppose. But I think we're in, things are different these days. You know, we're looking at people who genuinely feel like they are now being suppressed, repressed, and uh, depressed. You've got a media that lies about Trump, lies about Trump supporters, and does it all the time. And it's obvious and we can see it. That's why I was saying Wikipedia is basically an opinion aggregator. You take a look at any conservative commentator's profile and they'll say far right, provocateur, alt right. And none of those even mean anything. In fact, some of these people denounce the alt right, but they'll call them that anyway, because the media will just write whatever they want. Or Newsweek the other day said Trump was instigating violence in D.C. And so the National Guard was being deployed. But what did Trump ever say other than come to the protest? It'll be wild. How is that instigating violence? But those statements, opinions, not facts, nothing to back them up, are considered fact. 74 million people feel like they are living under a boot and they're getting fed up. You add that to the fact that many states are shut down and people's constitutional rights are being violated, notably in religious communities. People are ready to snap and they're not going to accept Joe Biden and two more years of lockdown, suppression of rights, and they're not going to accept being lied about in the media. So I don't think they're going to care all that much about what the media claims Pence can or can't do. Because of this, there's real reason why Donald Trump and Mike Pence need to win. Build back better. A European slogan used uh, around the Great Reset, this idea of resetting global capitalism because of climate change, for the most part, is Joe Biden's slogan and his .gov for his transition. Strange. A lot of people don't like it. Eh, I think Joe Joe Biden's a plagiarist. But regardless of the intent of doing that, you now have people asking that question, bringing it up. Hey, you know that Build Back Better is like a European slogan? Why is our incoming president saying that and getting a .gov here? They're raising the question. They say Joe Biden, according to Tony Bobulinski, a family confidant, is compromised by China. Joe Biden flew his son in Air Force Two to China. Whether or not you care about these things, people see that in the news. They see how the media covered up the Hunter Biden story. And then only after the election came out and said, oh, yeah, that whole thing's true. Or how about COVID and the Wuhan lab? That story is not coming out from New York Mag. But before this, they said it was all not true. It was fake. It was a lie. And that you were dumb for believing it. This means... There are a lot of people who are done and won't accept the other side. And it's true for the Democrats. The Democrats won't accept Trump. They haven't accepted him in the past four years. They've done everything they could to stop him. Trump supporters won't accept the left. Where do we go? Well, in Pennsylvania, the Republicans are refusing to seat a Democrat who won a state Senate race because of the ongoing allegations pertaining to the presidential election. It's reaching local level politics. And now we're going to have many angry Trump supporters on the ground in D.C., Antifa is expected to show up and already threats have been made. So tell me what you think is going to happen, because I don't know. But this is it. Today is the calm before the storm. Well, we can see the storm forming. Tomorrow's going to get uh, spicy. And I th- Majid says he's fearing for what's going to happen in the next 10 days. You want to know why that's interesting? Ted Cruz said he wants 10 days at, to investigate some of these states. What if tomorrow they refuse to certify the results for Biden and then we go through a 10 day period? It'll get nuts. It will. We'll see, my friends. But I'll tell you what, tonight, live, 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. Come hang out. We are going to be talking about the Georgia runoff race, what's going on in D.C., and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. So again, the next segment will be live at 8 p.m. over at YouTube.com forward slash Timcast IRL. Check it out. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.